Most home printers only have a printing area of about 30 square centimeters, which means for bigger garments, you have to somehow attach these pieces together again. And that can be done in many different ways. If you're here for the first time, I'm Brigitte and I 3D print fashion at home. Today, let's look at five different ways to connect 3D printed textiles. In order to share these five different techniques, I picked a very small project. So this tissue cover, first method is really classical, so treat it as your general textile and sew it. In order to sew your 3D printed textile, you want to make seam allowances, which can be little tabs, anything between 3 to 5 mil. And to make sure that the tabs can move independently, I'm giving them a little bit space between each other because everything's printed in place. For the sewing to work, you want to use a leather needle. And this is a slightly different needle from general needles because it actually cuts through the material. This also means that you shouldn't be going back and forth in the beginning of your textile, which you usually do because you completely cut through the material. This connection is more than strong enough to be turned inside out and you can barely see it. The second method is external connections and other haberdasheries. For this project, I'm choosing an eyelet plier and that means that the design needs to be slightly adapted in order to handle ribbon and eyelets. In this case, I'm starting off the design digitally with the pieces already overlapping, how it would in the end turn out so that I can make sure that the eyelets are placed in such a way that the overlap is absolutely perfect. You'll need to know how big your eyelets are before you're even starting this process because the holes need to be the size of your eyelets. So in this case, the eyelets I'm using are five millimeter and the hole needs to be four millimeter. And so the tap I designed is seven millimeters high just to give that extra space above and below the eyelet. It's possible to punch holes through the material afterwards. It just doesn't look as good and you can't do what I've done here, which is completely measuring where you want the holes to be so that everything is perfectly symmetrically aligned. The last step is opening the design up so that the holes completely overlap once you fold the printed design. After that, you want to push the eyelets through your 3D printed material and then you use the eyelet plier to squeeze them together. Or if you don't have this tool, you can also use a hammer to do this. For this video, I'm using rolled eyelets and it's said they're very smooth, but they actually aren't, possibly because the material is too thin. And as you can see, the material is strong enough with just the eyelets, but since it was designed for ribbons, I'll finish it with ribbons. It does mean for any overlapping textiles, you can use just the eyelets by themselves as a connection, which is really cool. However, next time I wouldn't use eyelets anymore because they're only pretty on one side. So I would go for grommets instead. The third method is melting and fusing, which can be done with either a soldering iron or a 3D pen. And literally, I looked all over the place for my soldering iron and I couldn't find it anywhere. So we're just going to do this test with a 3D pen. And here as well, your digital design needs to be slightly adapted, similar to sewing, but slightly different. And that is just the case because my design is folded. If you just have two separate pieces, you don't need any tabs. You can just put them next to each other and 3D pen a connection over it. For this design, I'm using one tap of three mil high and one tap half that high, so 1.5 millimeters, so that there's a big enough area to make the 3D pen connection. The diameter of filament that my printer uses is 1.75, which is the exact same diameter that the 3D pen needs. And so I decided to put my filament in the 3D pen. This is not recommended by the manufacturer of the pen. So do it at your own risk, but it does work. And the benefit of this is of course that you can use the same color as your 3D printed textile, as well as it being flexible material. I've tried this with different flexible filaments and I must say the less flexible it is, the better it works. 
As you can see, this is not necessarily my strong suit, so I would highly recommend Crisia from Suprinted. She does this way, way better, and she has some really cool projects, so definitely check her out. Final note, I wouldn't recommend this type of seam for anything that needs folding inside out. The fourth method is printing in place, which means you put the two pieces that you want to connect onto the build plate and you print on top of that, which is what I've done here already. So you print a connection rather than using a 3D pen, which is handheld, so it's a bit more mm, wobbly and ugly. Whereas if you print on top of the two layers, you get a very pretty design. You can really make a very complex connection. And so it's definitely the most beautiful way to do it, but it's also the most difficult way. Why? Because it's only suitable in certain situations. And there's two things that you need to keep in mind. One is that the BL touch sensor needs to calibrate on top of the textile at the same height that you want to print at. And secondly, the connecting pieces should be at the same height that being said, I don't do that here, hence why the print didn't turn out that good. The digital design of this is quite simple. You want to design your, let's say, glue separately. Give whatever design you made a little bit of height. I'm choosing 0.4, so that's two print layers. And on top of the design, that should look something like this. In the case of small prints, you want to leave the print on the build plate once it's finished to start the next at exactly the same location. That becomes a lot easier because I'm only using a single 3D model here and so Kira automatically places it in the middle. For this test, because I wanted to stick with the tissue design, I tried to 3D print onto it folded. I want to recommend it. So once you've finally got all the pieces in place, you just press print and make sure that the BL touch sensor is on the same level as your print. And then everything should be looking somewhat like this, hopefully better. And the fifth method is modular and this is by far my favorite as you know if you're following me and um, that means you're creating a certain design with holes in it and you create a whole bunch of connectors that go with it when it comes to repair when it comes to recycling this means you can still take apart any of your designs and put it back together again um, so it's a much more durable way of producing clothing. At the same time, it is also the most design intensive method. If you're interested, please check out the linked video where I'm going over the high level design process that I use for modular design and with my 3D printed kimono as an example. For this specific design, some of the modules are functional, some of the modules are not functional and just for decoration. And overall, I had a very uh, different idea in mind and this happens very often with modular design where however you thought it was going to turn out digitally is not necessarily how it turns out when you actually print it and put it together. And so there's a lot of trial and error involved. Since this is more of an example project, I left it as is. So the first prototype is as good as it gets. Right, and that's it. Thanks for watching. So if you found this helpful with your own project, please consider liking and subscribing. And as a last note, for each of these designs, I've used different 3D printing techniques. I'm not really going over them in this video, um, but if you've seen anything where you're like, ooh, how did she do that? Then please let me know in the comments and I can make a separate video for any of the techniques used. See you later.